Hi, here is Klaus from QuantUX and in this tutorial I will show you how to use the new scripting feature in QuantUX. Let's start. We create a new prototype. We call it Script Demo, choose the screen resolution and we are ready to go. The scripting functionality is currently in beta. To make use of it, you have to enable the beta features in the settings. Just open the settings dialog and click on Enable Beta Features. Once we have enabled the beta features, you can see that there is a new component type, the script element. We can drop it on the canvas and when we click on the blue button that says Edit Script, we can edit the content of the script. I will build now a very simple prototype that uses a script to sum up the values of two input fields. To do so, I will create a screen and I will add two input fields to it and I will add in addition a text field to show the output of the calculation. Now I have to add data binding to the text fields and the label. This is very important because the data binding makes the user inputs available in the script. So we will bind the first field to the value A, the second field to the value B and the text field to the sum variable. Now I will add a button and I will wire the button to the script element. This means that if the user clicks on the button, the script element will be executed. It is important to note that the execution mode of the script will be set to click trigger. There are three other possibilities that I will explain later. Now we can open the script editor and can start editing the script. What we do now is we will get access to the user input. We will create a variable A that uses the global data object and uses data.a to read the value. We also have to multiply the value times 1 because the text fields return a string. We also read the value of the b field into a variable b. Now we create the sum variable uh, and we calculate in here the sum of a plus b. Now it is time to hand the variable back. We also use the data uh, element for this, so we write data.sum equals sum. If we on the left side enter now two values and execute the script for debugging, we can see that the calculations work. In case you write more complex scripts, you can also use the console for debugging. When we open the simulator now, we can see that the script is executed once we click on the run button. So we have created now a very realistic prototype that allows us also to simulate more complex business decision logic. However, in this case, the script was executed only when the users click on the run button. QuantUX also offers an alternative. We can change the script trigger to data. To do so, we remove the button and change the trigger to data. Now, the script is executed every time the user changes an input value. The effect of this is that you get a very reactive user experience. You could see that there was a little issue. Because the users hadn't provided any input, the sum could not be calculated correctly. To fix this, we will create now a new script element that will be executed on the load of the simulator. The script will be very simple. We will just assign some initial values. We set A to 2, B to 4 and we already calculate the sum to 6. Last, we need to change the trigger type to load. This will ensure that the script is executed once the simulator is run. You can see this now, the initial values are set. Scripts can be also used to implement more complex navigation logic. If the script returns a string that matches the name of a screen on the canvas, the simulator will navigate to this screen after the execution of the script. Let's have a look at a very simple example. I am now building a very simple prototype that consists of three screens. The first screen will contain an input field and a button that is wired to the script. If the value of the input element is smaller than 5, the script will navigate to a screen called bigger 5. Otherwise, it will navigate to a screen called smaller equals 5. The script is very simple. First, we will read from the data object the C variable into a new variable. Also, do not forget to multiply times 1 because the value will be initially a string. Afterwards comes our decision logic. If c is smaller or equals to 5, we will navigate to the smaller equals 5 screen and otherwise we will navigate to the bigger 5 screen. In the simulator you can see now that the logic is executed. If we enter 5, the bigger than 5 screen is shown. If we enter 2, the smaller than 5 screen is shown. 
Scripts can be also used to change the style of elements or their visibility. Let's start with a very simple example. We will add a button that should be able to toggle the visibility of a rectangle below. To do so, we create a script element and wire it to the toggle button. In previous examples, we have used the global data element to read and write data. Now, we will use the QUX element, which is our API, to get access to screens and widgets. First, you need to get access to the right screen. You can use QUX.getScreen. Once you have access to the screen, you can ask the screen for its children. So, we use the getWidget method and enter here the name of the widget, box1. The w variable presents now the box element. We can call the hide method to hide it. As an alternative, we can also call the toggle method. This will hide or show the element based on the previous state. If we open now the simulator, you can see that pressing the toggle button will show and hide the element. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have further questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment below. If you like the QuantUX project, don't forget to give us a star at our GitHub page. Also subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.